Well, momentum is bearish. S&P, and it turned back to bearish for NASDAQ, but it's forming a, a sideways triangle. I'll talk about that in the video. The Dow uh, has had a bigger sell-off. The Dow's dropped about 2,000 points since the Fed meeting. It peaked the day after the Fed. Fed sell-off, and again, the question is now, will that post-Fed sell-off continue and still go, or do we rebound? The Dow has three gaps. See the sell signal we got here on the Dow? And we've the little... Uh, critical mass line has turned back to red and it's dropping and we're in the red portion of the cloud and again we had a bullish signal here tried to turn here couldn't do it reaffirmed the bullish signal here but we started getting distribution warning signs and liquidation warning signs but it's coming back in at critical mass now we've taken that out Dow's forming a bullish falling wedge so does a Dow rebound you've got the S&P for or the Nasdaq forming a triangle continuation of reversal the Dow is forming a bullish falling wedge and the S&P has a possible bull flag if we attempt to rally back up I'm telling you this because we don't have a sell signal here yet for the others I'll talk more about that in my next video on Sunday to show you what some of my trading models are doing are starting to see some begin to turn bearish but can we rebound and fill some of the gaps on the Dow which has led the charge lower. The Dow has now become very, very oversold. The Dow has come towards the horizontal support. We've given back all the gains since January, the beginning of January. We've given back all of the gains uh, that we've we've made since January here. Looking out there, uh, it looks like about mid-January, actually. Uh, mid-January, we broke out of that level, and we're right back to there. So all, all the move, the move upward on the Dow is now gone. Okay, but we're forming a bullish falling wedge. The Dow could still come back and fill the gaps and come up and hit this trend line we broke right here, or hit the trend line we broke right here, and attempt to fill the gap right here. We don't have to fill this gap. We can fill it at a later date. You don't have to fill it at all. Okay, but we have three gaps now on the Dow to be watching. Three gaps to be watching if the Dow tries to rebound here off of this level of support right here. So it's just something I'm watching. Again, maybe we go lower. If we get any kind of meaningful bounce, the VIX is predicting that we'll get a bounce either Monday or Tuesday, but you still might go lower before that happens. Maybe this uh, evolves into more of a channel uh, before you get a bounce. We'll see what happens. The point is, is that, again, we had the Fed meeting. The Dow peaked the very next day. The NASDAQ peaked the very next day. We've had a post-Fed sell-off. NASDAQ has corrected sideways. The Dow has corrected sharply lower by about 2,000 points. It's dropped over 5%. Dow's forming the bullish falling wedge. Again, you've got a possible bull flag here on the S&P 500 triangle forming on the NASDAQ. So we'll be watching to see what happens. Now, we've already filled the gaps back over here. And back over here, we've already filled these gaps on the S&P 500. The Dow never did. Okay, so it still may make an attempt to do it. If it does, then S&P could try to challenge the highs. That's possible. I'll talk more about the upper channel line in the weekly time frame later in the video. But it's also possible that we, you know, just see the Dow, you know, fill one or two of the gaps or whatever. And we maybe have a head and shoulders here on the S&P. Again, is what I'm going to be watching is if we start breaking the period. We're holding below the 200 now. We tried to get back above it. It failed. I'll be talking more about this later in the video, but I wanted to show you the Dow, not later in the video, but in my next video, pardon me, has become very, very oversold. So let me refresh the chart here. And it's got a possible bullish falling wedge. Okay, possible bullish falling wedge here at these gaps. So you got the gap from Friday right there. Okay, we've sold off. And you've got the gap earlier in the week, and you got the gap back up here near the top where we got that lower high. So we've had a big sell-off. This may evolve into more of a, a channel here, and uh, maybe something like that. If we don't, if we can't get some traction here, but you are forming a bullish divergence going into earnings next week, okay? And the Dow has sold off significantly, so I'll be watching these gaps going forward and again we don't have to fill these gaps we have three unfilled gaps on the Dow well Nasdaq and S&P already did the Dow has filled none of them the Dow very well could have peaked back over here if we get a rally get a big rally say on the Dow possible the S&P or and Nasdaq 
One of the other goes to a higher high, but the Dow peaked and made a lower high. Oh, led the charge up bottom out the August high when the others couldn't. Now it's leading the charge lower. The Dow be giving us some clues to my, what might happen. So again, we don't have reversal back up yet here on the 60 minute chart, but you do have a bullish diversion that's developing here on the RSI. So it's just what's something worth watching. Dow can rebound. If Apple can rebound, maybe we see NASDAQ and S&P attempt to do it as well. And again, if S&P tries to rebound, we still may hit that upper channel line. Getting towards 5,300, should the Dow attempt to rebound? Now, the Dow was down 2.37% this week, down 2.27% last week. And again, it's wiped out all the gains since, again, about mid-January or so. It's done that in two weeks. And I'm talking about the Dow because the Dow might be telling us what's going to happen. Remember, the Dow has the sell signals, but we didn't see the mass sell signal show up yet. But we know that distribution is taking place. Again, the Dow peaked right after the Fed meeting. It's dropped 5%. If it rebounds back up, we could see an attempted rebound surrounding things. NASDAQ and S&P could go up and try to back test the trend line here or Again, the one um, further back from the October low, and we still may try to fill these gaps uh, here. Again, these three unfilled gaps and this one back up here. So if we do attempt to get a rally, the Dow might have already peaked. It's a big rally. NASDAQ hasn't had the bigger sell-off. It's gone sideways in a trading range, but the Dow has a rebound. We'll be watching the NASDAQ. Does it break down? Does it, does it break out? By the way, momentum, momentum shifted back to bearish. It's just going back and forth from bullish to bearish as we go sideways. But we peaked over here we, right after the Fed, and we've dropped 3.19%. The Dow's dropped 5%. So gap support has held on the NASDAQ. It's got to take out that level if we're going to get a bigger sell-off. Now, again, as I'm going to be talking about in this video, you've got your triangle. You've got your triangle. Draw that very straight, but uh, we've got a triangle here. Uh, from these highs, a reversal or continuation pattern. Far, NASDAQ has peaked. It just doesn't seem like it because it's gone sideways. Now, again, it still may exceed that peak. Triangle gets an upward resolution. Now, the Dow's dropped 5%. NASDAQ has dropped 3.19%. S&P has dropped right around 3%. Again, peak the day after the Fed hitting this trend line. Back up, we just went three points higher. Broke the trend line, got confirmation. We get a follow through, but we drop 3%. And again, you're coming into this uh, support area here and the gap support here, 50 period moving average. I didn't draw that very straight, but again, well, so far we have had a post-fed sell-off. The question is, is it going to continue or do we form a larger topping process like we did in January, 2022, go back up and hit the upper boundary of the channel before turning? Time I'll show you, we're starting to become oversold now on the intraday charts. The Dow's forming that bullish diversions on the 60 minute chart. So I'll be watching we attempt to rebound. So you might see some attempt to shift back up if that happens. But if we break down further, do serious technical damage. Again, I remain short on the S&P and the Dow. Start seeing strength, strength, uh, then it's still possible we have a larger topping process. And again, the Dow very well may peak to have those gaps. And if the Dow attempts to fill them, then I'll be watching to see what happens here. When it starts turning back to bullish, and that's going to give me the signal, hey, get out of my S&P short position. My next update, I'll talk about the momentum signals, some of the trending signals. In mind, if the Treasury yield pulls back, 10-year Treasury yield pulls back, might help the market for the short term. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. You could take a moment to do that. I would really appreciate it. I do need your help at this time. You donate any amount or make it a recurring donation the link below put out the information for free and ask that you that you can to help out please consider helping out today i thank you for that i want to give you a quick heads up on thursday we saw the uh s p move into a risk off environment okay turned up and turned into positive uh uh showing we're going risk off negative momentum we had the risk line turn red previously then the S&P trend signal, it's turning back and forth, uh, going from uh, green to red to green to red, and now it's back to red on Friday with the sell-off. Continue to break down further, we'll do more technical damage. We can go a whole lot lower. Rebound, 
See the 60-minute shirts. Al's oversold. It's got a bullish divergence, and I'll show you uh, the others. A Sunday update, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Watching, does this remain in a risk-off environment here? If the signal has flipped now on Thursday and Friday. Does the trend remain negative, or does it just kind of go back and forth? Rebound, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But at the moment, at least so far, the trend has shifted. It shifted before, but it turned back. That really means we're kind of going sideways. Uh, but we are currently in a risk off uh, environment at the moment. If this, if we get a rally back down, uh, a backup of this uh, will turn back down, go back into risk on. If this remains negative, we can get a much bigger sell off. If it turns back to a risk on environment, we may attempt a recovery. I'm watching those three gaps on the Dow very closely. They haven't been filled. Dow is now becoming very oversold. Okay, we had another down date on Friday. The Dow lost 475 points at the close. The Dow was down almost 600 points at the lows, but recovered off of the lows uh, by the end of the session just a bit. But the S&P suffered the worst day since January as inflation woes erupt. The hot inflation reports the Dow down 400 and almost 76 points down one one and a quarter percent. It was down uh, again at lower levels. Now, since the Fed meeting, remember I talked about a post-Fed sell-off? It's now dropped 2,000 points, 5% lower. S&P down by almost 1.5%, down almost 76 points to close at 51.23. NASDAQ down by 1.62%. Russell down by nearly 2% to close just above 2,000. The VIX soared by 16%. The VIX was up uh, right around 28, 29% uh, at the highs, I believe, somewhere around there. Might have gotten a little higher. I was watching it. It's closed up 16% higher as we saw volatility surge. Again, we're holding above that 200. Watching to see if we drop below it, try to get a bounce, or on the S&P, or if the VIX would drop below or, or uh, bounce off the 200, get the confirmation of the break of the trend line. All through to the rising wedge, which we ended up getting. Here's the VIX, and again, you can see a little bit of a topping tail there at the very end of the session, but the S&P came down to that 50 period and, and uh, confirmed the break of the trend line and follow through now. This is the follow through confirmation. Bearish engulfing back over here was the confirmation bar to the break. Never got the follow through until now. VIX was up 16%, uh, ended up closing at 17.31. It was as high as 19, and I think it was right around uh, 28, 29% at the highs. Could have been a little bit higher when I was looking at it at the uh, near the highs. It was right around 28 or 29%, something like that. I can't quite remember. But again, we're bouncing off the 200. The 10 is now getting above the 200. The 20 and the 50 are likely going to get back above that level. But we're still watching. See if that 50 can get above the 200 and if price can hold above both. If we start dropping and losing the 200, out the 50, you still have the gap to contend with. Again, the gap may not get filled until a much later date, but it still could get filled if we attempt to rebound. Remember, the Dow has multiple gaps. Now it has three gaps. Maybe three of them get filled. Maybe some of them get filled. Attempt to rebound. I'll show you that. But you, you saw the VIX come up to the trend line, and here I've included the shadow. I showed you this before. Excluding it, we were right at it right there. Uh, just underneath it, whoops, right there, just underneath it. And here we got above it and we moved up to the trend line, including the shadow there and tried to overthrow it and got a little bit of a candle of indecision here in the form of a spinning top. The MACD moved up right up to the center line there in slightly in positive territory. If that continues, uh, that's going to be bad for the stock market. When the uh, MACD goes into positive territory, bad things start happening on the S&P 500. The stochastic moved just a fraction above 50, but it's right at that 50 level and we're just barely above that center line. So again, if we start seeing this get some traction up, we can get a bigger dump in the market. The Dow attempts to rebound as we're now moving here into uh, earnings season here. We're gonna get more earnings now. We'll be watching to see what happens. I mentioned the Dow because again, it hasn't filled the gaps. Well, the NASDAQ and S&P did, and we have now another gap, which none of them have filled. Previous two gaps, the Dow never filled them. Have to fill them, but we very well could.
So again, we're halting at this trend line. We'll be watching what happens here. Uh, and again, you start seeing the MACD go into positive territory and remain there. We're going to get a much bigger drop in the market. Uh, pull back off of the trend line. Then we buy a little bit of time and then we'll be watching. The S&P now has a second straight down week. Now, even though the market's selling off, supposedly on inflation concerns, according to the financial media, 10-year treasury note yield turned down. The dollar turned up. A doji on Thursday. We had the big surge on Wednesday surrounding the inflation data, and, and now we gap lower. So again, 10-year pulls back. Maybe we get a, a, a rebound move. We've had the 10-year yield break the downtrend. We've had the 10-year break yield or break above overhead resistance now. It's holding above the 10. If it pulls back to the 10 and 20 and, you know, kind of uh, back tests this breakout or moves to the rising trend line, uh, again, it might produce a rebound on the Dow that has really leading the charge lower. NASDAQ's been going sideways for seven weeks straight. Dow's been going lower. So again, we got that doji that could mark a short-term peak. That's right at this level right here. Be watching the 10 year yield going into next week. Uh, well, the 10 year treasury note yield dropped by 1.68%. The dollar surged. Here's the dollar by 0.73%. Big surge on the dollar. And the dollar broke out of overhead resistance for the week. Uh, again, both of them have a negative correlation. The 50 uh, is above the 200 here, but uh, we've now gotten the breakout playing catch up to the 10 year treasury note yield. They've now both broken the downward trend line and overhead resistance negative for the stock market going forward. Now seeing the dollar get above the 20 month moving average, uh, the month has not yet ended, but it is up and it's up by 1.29%. So we'll be watching to see if we close the month out above that 20 month. The time we did that, uh, closed back above it, back over here, the NASDAQ had topped weekly time frame up 1.69% for the week for the dollar and it broke out. And then it got a little back test last week and then it uh, broke overhead resistance. So you've had two breakouts now here on the dollar. And again, right after the dollar breakout of horizontal resistance, uh, NASDAQ peak as well as Bitcoin. Now, remember on March 20th, I told you with, with the last Fed meeting, I told you we could see a post-Fed sell-off. Sometimes you get a rally with the Fed and shortly thereafter, and then you get a sell-off. I told you until we get a confirmed reversal, a confirmation and follow through with the breaking of the trend lines, the possibility of a rally. Had the Fed meeting on March 20th. We rallied the next day. The Dow peaked. That was the top for the Dow. The Dow is now sold off more than 5%. S&P turned down, turned back up and went three points higher than the previous peak. Three points. And it formed a little miniature double top and it sold off. Here it is. Here's the S&P 500. Here's the Fed meeting right there. Okay, we rallied on the Fed day. We gapped higher. We got the black candlestick. I told you to watch that, that trend line right there. That's the trend line I'm playing. We got a black candlestick there. That is where the S&P got at that trend line, but the Dow peaked there and so did the NASDAQ. Dow sold off. The NASDAQ went sideways for seven weeks straight. The S&P began to sell off to the 10 period moving average, rebounded back up. This high right here is 52.61. We went to 52.64. We went three points higher than that level, just slightly above it. And then we turned down. We broke this trend line right here, right there, and we got the break of it. And now we're getting the confirmation of that break of the trend line to follow through to drop below the 50 period moving average. The rising wedge has now gotten confirmation and follow through. So it's possible that the S&P stops making new highs. If we get back above the trend lines, broken trend lines, momentum shifts back to bullish, like it did with NASDAQ, then you still have the possibility of challenging the highs. That's the way technical analysis works. You need confirmation to fall through, but even if you get it and you start getting back above the trend lines, then it invalidates the confirmation of fall through. So that's just the way it works. Now, right here, uh, we've come to this horizontal support level, the 50 period moving average, this lower boundary right here, uh, which which by trend line slightly moved on me there. Uh, so we have a potential 
bull flag if we can get back above the moving averages back above the momentum cloud again we are moving into uh, the heart of earnings season here watching that and see what happens right here at our 50 period moving average but p again as i talked about there's the fed meeting there's the day after you got a post fed sell-off that's what we've had it could escalate if we start taking out the 50 period moving average you've got the 10 crossing down the 20 with the sell-off there on Friday. We broke the trend line, we back tested it. I talked about, remember I talked about how we had the same bearish engulfing back at the July peak and we ended up getting a lower high and then you began to get a bigger sell-off. Maybe it plays out that way, but again, we needed confirmation of fall through. Here we got, con we got confirmation breaking this trend line now, but no follow through yet. We'll see if that happens. The other wedge has gotten both. It's possible that we've now peaked. But the Dow has sold off sharp, sharply, has three gaps, that one or two of those gaps, or maybe all of them, are going to attempt to be filled. It's very possible the Dow has peaked. It's formed a falling wedge, and we have potentially uh, a bull flag under construction here uh, with the S&P 500, should we attempt to get a rally with earnings. Well, the S&P has come down to the 50 period moving average and horizontal support here. Well, NASDAQ tagged it Thursday and bounced off of it. Sorry, it tagged it on uh, Wednesday, bounced off of it Thursday and tagged it again on Friday. And it's forming a triangle. And just quickly here with our other trend line, our rising wedge, we broke this trend line right there with the doji. We back tested it. We got the the uh, uh, confirmation there. And now we're getting the follow through now. Same thing with the Fed meeting. Again, NASDAQ, we had the Fed rally right here. The NASDAQ peaked the very next day. It has not moved to new high. It still may. We have a triangle. It can be a reversal or a continuation. If it's a continuation, you have the upper boundary of the channel line that I've talked about connecting the peak here to the uh, July peak. And that's the upper boundary of the channel. I've shown you that chart and I'll probably show it to you in a minute. But this has an upward resolution surrounding earnings that's where we're going if we have a downward resolution with the triangle then again you got to take out the 50 and remain below it now we had the black candlestick we came up we hit the trend line right here it's better seen on the 60 minute chart the trend line there um, but we, we came up to it exclu excluding the uh, uh, shadow 60 minute chart but we got that black candlestick the very next day after the fed so far that's been the peak i talked about a post fed sell-off we've had it but we've only gone sideways the dow has sold off had more of a sell-off there on the s p 500 but really we've just gone sideways here uh, on the nasdaq i'm going to be watching which way this triangle breaks now a bullish reversal of conditions with momentum there on friday or thursday uh, went up to the trend line here and it turned right back down and we got a bearish reversal of conditions but momentum signals are still bullish so again i'm going to be watching do we have a break or do we get a breakout of the triangle surrounding earnings now if i just bring up a rectangle you can see again we've gone sideways for seven straight re weeks again i told you if we break this level right here that's bearish okay and if we push up through this triangle, this upper boundary of the triangle, and clear this high, then that's bullish short term. That would take us up to that other trend line of resistance. So again, we've been going sideways, but far we peaked right after the very day after the Fed meeting. Post-Fed sell-off, but it's been more of a sideways trading range, continuation of the sideways trading range. Now stochastic rolls over here. It's trying to roll over, but I mean, if it goes uh, deeper into territory MACD goes negative then we can have a downward resolution if we see them recycle back up CD does not move into negative territory then we can prevent that and again you might see the upper channel uh, line tested versions is very well could give us a breakdown now we have to take out these 50 period moving averages but deck is hitting this lower trend line of support of the triangle 50 and the S&P is hitting the 50 and horizontal support break below the 50 a break below this gap support area right here where we gapped higher over here would be uh, in a weakness a sign of strength would be a break above the trend line 
and a break above the upper boundary of the rectangle. So the lower boundary of the rectangle and the trend line, the upper boundary of the rectangle and the trend line of the triangle. We've gone sideways since March. I mean, March, we peaked March 21st. Because we've gone sideways, you wouldn't think that. It's, you know, the psychology of the market. Now, while we're at these levels of support, I just want to go back to the VIX because the VIX was up 16.30%. That means there's an 85% chance based on probability, 85% chance in the next two sessions that we get an update on the S&P either Monday or Tuesday. Now, S&P can go a whole lot lower and there's still a 15% chance that that fails, but it is probability based on uh, moves greater than 10% on the VIX. Get a move on the VIX of greater than 10% to the upside, usually within the next two sessions, unless you get parabolic trending moves where the VIX just starts going parabolic, then it doesn't play out. 85% of the chance, or 85% of the time, when you have a move of greater than 10%, within two days, you get some kind of bounce. That doesn't mean that the, the selling is over. Now, it could mean that for the short term, or it just means you're getting a bounce, and then you're going to resume the decline. Just keep that in mind that the VIX is predicting, based on probability, 85% chance, 15% chance failure, 85% chance, pretty good odds, in either Monday or Tuesday, you're going to have an up day. Now, again, Monday may go try to break the 50, and we may go lower, get that bounce. So keep that in mind. Just predicting in the next two trading sessions that there will be an update on the S&P 500. Now, if we bottom out and try to rally back up, the Dow may try to try to fill those gaps. I wanted to bring that up now that I'm showing you that the S&P and NASDAQ are both testing the 50 period moving averages. What happens there? Now, we've broken these trend lines on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. And if we get an upward resolution, but we're still going sideways on the NASDAQ, okay, and you still have a possible triangle. The triangle can break down, it can break up, it can break up or down. If it breaks up, then this is the upper boundary that we want to be watching right here. So again, if it has an upward resolution, you could see with surrounding earnings, you could see a move up to that upper boundary. Having said that, we've gotten the bearish crossovers this week and last week, we've gotten bearish crossovers of our oscillators in the weekly time frame. Just because that's happened, it doesn't mean we can't get a rally back up to test that trend line. The triangle can still have an upward resolution. Now rolling over on the oscillators, okay? And we're completing the diversion. So if that's gonna play out immediately, we need a downward resolution to the triangle and to break this horizontal support level here, the high 17,000 range. Okay, it has to break and the triangle has to break down. Okay, the bullish reversal of conditions with momentum Thursday flipped back to bearish today. So that means we're either going sideways or we're going back down. Momentum signals still remain bullish. So we're kind of a mixed bag as we're going sideways. But I wanted to show you again the upper boundary here and that the, the S&P might do the same thing if we have a bull flag on our hands rally with earnings now again look at the oscillators they're all rolling over but look at the bottom look at the bottom here we got the bullish cross we got the bullish cross okay and that didn't stop price from coming back and testing the lows from October that didn't stop that from happening do you see this and it, it went for a couple of weeks so again it's still possible it's the upper channel line have these negative divergences now over here you got the the crossovers uh, of the uh, with the negative divergences completing and still went back up and got a lower high and a test of that level so keep that in mind you could still see that happen here uh, even though we have these negative divergences all over the place and we do have a divergence between NASDAQ and S&P. S&P moved to a new high, when moved three points above the previous peak. NASDAQ did not. NASDAQ made a lower high. It's still possible that we get a larger divergence. Again, uh, something that looks like this and maybe diverge from one another. NASDAQ makes a new high and S&P doesn't or vice versa. Or maybe they both do. Uh, S&P is behaving like NASDAQ Jr. now uh, with the Magnificent Seven. Uh, influence on it. But I'm just showing you, if we get an upward resolution, the upper channel 
gets tested you have this channel okay and that would be tested to blow off top you might get a topping tail or something like that if we make a new high we need to break the support and the triangle needs to have a downward resolution triangles can be reversal or continuation pattern so do keep that in mind same thing here we've seen the stochastic roll over now well over here in July it rolled over too but then it turned back up and you went back up and you tested those highs in July couldn't exceed them we got a lower high but you did go back and test them so that's that's a point I'm trying to make with these diversions is it says don't rule out that we still can't test these levels now for the week Nasdaq again forming the triangle going sideways uh, Nasdaq is down 0.58 percent down 105 points for the week now we've got the diversions on the RSI it still may go up like that and form a divergence there and we have this larger diversions but it still may do that and that's the point I'm trying to make same thing with the rate of change it still may go up here and do that be watching now I had a short position on Nasdaq I close that out with the momentum flipping to bullish being that post fed rally followed by the sell-off but I'm still short the S&P 500 and Dow that could change next week chart attempting a rebound Nasdaq starts breaking down I could jump back in on Nasdaq momentum's going back and forth and we're still going sideways so I might just wait on Nasdaq but uh, again momentum did turn back to bearish so it's just going sideways the way signals momentum signals turn back to bullish on Apple and Apple's bouncing off horizontal support for that uh, double top pattern and if we try to bounce with Apple and go to a Fibonacci retracement go back up to the 200 we've got the death cross on Apple now and again remember well Nasdaq's gone sideways seen a bit of a sell-off there with the Dow and S&P peaked long ago back in in December the double top pattern so if it does rebound again uh, it could help Nasdaq it did help Nasdaq on Thursday there's been now a decoupling it's really falling Nvidia so it's really going to be what does Nvidia do from here Apple could help and Apple is a Dow component and the Tau has three gaps to be filled so uh, again I'll be watching these Fibonacci retracements on Apple's daily chart Apple has been going sideways now for seven weeks one two three four five six seven after we pushed up through this level we started going sideways Again, it's formed a triangle which way do we break now with the triangle and again we went back up on Thursday hit the level went back down towards it there on Friday and you get really kind of a candle of a decision possibly a topping tail if we can break down the lower boundary and uh, the lower boundary of the rectangle the lower boundary of both tr the triangle and the rectangle if we have an upward resolution the upper channel the weekly time frame if we have a breakdown we need to break the support and move back to try to fill the gap well below the 50 period moving average in the daily time frame so I wanted to show you that Apple and the S&P are both hitting the 50 period moving averages Apple hitting the trend line of support or uh, Apple Nasdaq pardon me Nasdaq's hitting the trend line of support uh, for the lower boundary of the triangle and the S&P 500 is hitting horizontal support as they both hit their 50 period moving averages stack has tested it twice uh, this week be watching which way the rectangle breaks which way the triangle breaks there the more recent price action we'll be watching to see which way we go so Nasdaq continues to go sideways for seven straight weeks it did peak in March the day after the Fed meeting at least so far it was a week we had the 99 sell signal and since then it's gone sideways and I told you it may go a little higher than that it may turn immediately with the nine count it went a little bit higher but it's gone sideways so far the 99 signal has just given us a sideways move same thing for the S&P 500 if the S&P bounces off the 50 in the period 50 period moving average in the daily time frame again we still may come up and try to hit the upper channel line even you know back test this uh, this trend line right here which moved on me sometimes you know when you hit save on this program the trend lines move like the charts and uh, anyways if we try to rebound back up again uh, those two trend lines intersect uh, together right there at the upper boundary of the channel could still form a divergence on the RSI we have one already on the S&P or on the uh, Nasdaq get better defined if we don't break horizontal support and take up those 50 period moving averages but here we don't have one you don't have to have one you didn't have one in July it have a divergence back over here 
at the January top. And again, it may be something like this where you get a peak. Look at how we went sideways on S&P. You sold off, okay, you came back up, and then you went a little bit higher. And if we went a little bit higher, you know, we would likely slam up into that trend line right there. Weekly time frame, the S&P has a possible 13 count that happens. Don't break down. It's important to be watching if we break the support levels that we're at right now. Remember, the Dow has three gaps that it still may try to rebound and fill, possibly surrounding earnings. But I'll be watching that RSI. Does it get a diversions like what we had over here? I remember when this was going on. And I mean, this went on for weeks on the S&P and NASDAQ. And, and NASDAQ made a lower high. S&P made a slightly higher high. But this went on for weeks. And, and all over the financial uh, media, on the, on the financial channels, the narrative was that everything the Fed is going to do, it's already all priced in. The market is going to have a great year in 2022. And then the bottom fell out of the stock market. That consolidation eventually Re, re, resolved in a negative uh, outcome. We can get that immediately. We can get a, a big drop, but we are now in earnings season. It's still possible we try to go up to those levels if we try to bounce off of our 50 period moving averages. We had this divergence right here uh, with the NAAIM exposure index, which is what the uh, uh, active money managers are doing, and they're all in here. It started to come down. Again, it could still form of diversions like over here. You had this diversions right here in November of 2021, and then it came down and it turned back up and you went a little bit higher. It could still do that. It may not. It's not. We need to see more weakness in the breaking of those 50 period moving averages. And maybe that's going to be the case. I'm just telling you, watch the triangle on NASDAQ. It can break for down. We'll see which way it goes. A bullish Move up would come up and hit these trend lines. A bearish move would move towards our 20 week moving average, take out the 50, and you start getting a bigger drop in the market. But it could be that we get something like this that creates confusion. And as I said, a push back up would trigger the stops for the short positions and cause longs to go, it's a breakout and buy top damage both the bulls and the bears by doing that. Even though we don't have a divergence yet on the RSI and we may not get one, we do have one on other indicators, the stochastic for instance, and here on the rate of change. S&P was down 1.5% for the week, 1.56 to be exact, down 80, almost 81 points for the week. MACD is not rolling over yet on the, the uh, weekly chair for the S&P. It did on the NASDAQ, but the stochastic is rolling over. So again, we'll be watching. Again, do we get something like what we had in July where it turns back up quickly or does it roll over and start breaking 80 and you get a bigger dump in the market? Breaking the 50 period, breaking horizontal support on the S&P 500. I'm saying watch this trend line on the VIX. Watch the VIX. Does it turn off of this trend line, drop back below the 200? We see volatility surge and start breaking those 50 period moving averages now in the daily timeframes. NASDAQ and S&P. We're seeing the divergences play out. Some of these divergences formed on the S&P and NASDAQ. If you do attempt to rally back up into the upper channel, you would form a quadruple negative diversion. So that's the strongest sell signal in technical analysis. Over here, we just had a triple divergence. We had a divergence there in November, and then we went up and we formed a triple negative diversions. Very similar situation in July. Here we have a triple diversions it would form one should we rally. If this this uh, rally does not happen, then we'll be watching, do we get a lower high if we attempt to re rebound? Should we attempt to rebound off the 50 period moving averages in the daily time frame?